Hello, my name is Bob Bonzar with the Yaskawa Technical Training Department. This is a series of electronic learning modules, or ELMs, for the Drive Wizard software. In this section, we will address methods to monitor and record data for reporting and troubleshooting. Among those methods are trend and trace recording. This will provide a real-time graphical data. Signal monitoring. We'll be able to see up to four different ways to view the monitors. Status and fault history. This shows the current status of the drive and keeps a run-in tab of the faults. Monitors in the parameter overview. All the U monitors which you could see with the keypad. And data log playback. This feature records the data on an SD card in the keypad for playback in Drive Wizard. From the Home tab, which automatically comes up, we can immediately go to the status and monitoring. We can also get there from the startup tools at the top or the startup and diagnostic at the very top. Once open, we can see all the monitoring methods available. Again, trend recorder, trace recorder, data logging, these are all similar in that you can see a graphical representation of the signals to monitor. The differences are that trend and trace require a continuous connection to the PC, but the data logger uses an SD card placed in the keypad during the monitoring, then remove that card and install it on your PC for viewing later. Let's continue with Trend Recorder. The trend can be used for longer periods of time monitoring up to 16 signals. For trend or trace recording, we need to be connected to the VFD. So let's go back and connect to our drive. Select the signals that you want to monitor. Here we will select the frequency reference, frequency output, output current, and the DC bus voltage, for example. Use the scroll bar to see the full list of more that you might want to add. click on start, it'll begin the traces, but I actually have to give the drive the run command for it to begin. You can see the frequency reference and the output frequency change as it is varied, as well as the other signals changing. Once I've captured the information that I want to see, we can then go ahead and save this information. You can then email it or export it to whomever you need to. Click on the screen to see the cursor. You can grab it and slide it to show the values update selected below. Hold the left mouse button on the slider to adjust the time span for better overall viewing of the signal. Or you can adjust it by the drop down, for example, from one minute to two. We can also change the width of the signal to emphasize it. And we can also go to setup to adjust the scaling. So here we can change the range from just being positive to the full range positive and negative if the signal were to go negative.
We can also click and set the active cursor measurement. This will monitor the display with two different cursors. So you can see the delta or the difference between the two cursor positions. And finally, if you go to the color palette on the right, you can adjust the colors of the signals. Next, signal monitoring. Signal monitoring will give you representations of up to four different styles of gauges. Here we'll select a different gauge for each signal and press start. You can also run the drive here using the drive control or from the external controller the drive is connected to. We'll go over more in another ELM how to control the drive. Next, status and fault history. This shows the current status of the drive, the fault history, and the fault trace, which captures all the conditions of the last fault. Make sure to click on the update, otherwise it will continue to show the previous data. So we'll take a look at this drive. And at the last time we had a particular fault under voltage, these were the conditions that the drive captured. We take a look at the fault history. We can see the number of faults that occurred previously, not just this last one. This will keep a running tab of the faults as well as the elapsed time when they occurred. and the status. The little LEDs will represent our digital inputs that we might be using. And you can see the bits change accordingly as I flip a switch. Now, if we were to go into a faulted condition, we can see the fault status light come on, as well as the fault output. I can reset that. I can also monitor the condition of any particular I.O. at the time that fault occurs. So during setup, I can go in here and monitor a specific I.O. signal if I select it. Again, frequency reference, output frequency, current, or what have you. And this will display the status of the drive at the time it's operating. So let's go ahead and start it. I can also trigger a fault. If I look at the fault history, it keeps a running tab of what all the different faults were, as well as the hours of operation, in case I need to look for some sort of pattern developing. Fault trace will tell us the most current fault, but also the activity at the time of the fault, like the output current, frequency, and the I.O. status when the fault happened. This information is again available on the display of the drive, but it's convenient to have in the software as well. The next thing we'll look at is the data log playback. Of course, to see this, we have to use the SD card and we have to capture that information ahead of time from the drive itself. So from a drive, we'll take the keypad out, and on the side, you'll see that there is a card slot or an SD card. A small SD card can be anywhere up to 32 gig. And we'll insert it into the card slot on the keypad. Make sure the card is fully inserted and replace the keypad on the drive.
Now we'll power up the drive. From the menu button, we'll select Diagnostic Tools. And then we'll see Data Logger at the top. Now you want to be careful, don't immediately hit Enter. You want to press the F3 key for Setup. Now we press the Enter key, and we can set up the data we want to monitor. In this case, Frequency Reference is automatically selected. So we'll go with that. We'll leave the default samples for us. We can also go in and adjust the sampling time. Sampling time will help with the amount of data collected. So the higher the number, the more data samples, the lower the number, the less data samples. Then we press enter. And to begin data logging, we select yes. And it's logging. So now we would go ahead and operate the drive. And it's capturing that information that we selected from the monitoring signals. If we go back to the data logger, we can confirm that it is still capturing data. If we want to end it here, we can say yes. Shut the drive off. And retrieve the SD card. Once we've removed the SD card from the keypad, we can insert it to our computer. And from the Drive Wizard software, if we go to Data Log Playback, we'll want to open the file. Go to the log file, and we can see the graphic information that we captured on the drive. Now, if you notice, if you don't put an SD card into the drive, And then you select the data logger. It will give you an error. We can clear this log error by hitting the reset button, going back into the data logger, and end the data log. If we don't end the data log, after a period of time, this error will appear on the drive again. So it's critical that you have an actual SD card in the keypad when you're using the data logger.